This evening, our top story tonight concerns a warning from the Pan American Health Organization about the circulation of SARS-CoV-2 and other respiratory viruses in the Americas, including the Caribbean. We'll discuss PAHO's recommendations for surveillance and health system responses, especially in light of the current outbreaks of other communicable diseases. In political news, Dr. Barajagio, General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, has assured that the 2024 budget set to be presented on Monday, will not introduce new taxes. We'll explore the government's focus areas for the budget, including investments in community roads, health, education, and recreational facilities, and how it plans to address global inflation and support various sectors. Turning to local traffic concerns, the management of the Demerara Harbour Bridge Corporation has observed an increase in dangerous overtaking during two-way traffic crossing on the bridge. We'll cover the management's reminders to drivers about the rules and regulations, including speed limits and weight restrictions to prevent accidents. In a distressing incident, a five-year-old child underwent surgery at the Linden Hospital complex to remove a warhead lodge in her throat. We'll provide details on the surgery's success, the current condition of the child, and ongoing police investigation into the shooting incident, including the arrest of the suspect, Shamar Season. Finally, we report on Argentina's economic situation, where annual inflation has surged to 211%. We'll examine the implications of this economic crisis and the statements from President Javier Malay regarding the country's future prospects. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for January 12, 2024. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the Pan American Health Organization has warned about the circulation of SARS-CoV-2 and other respiratory viruses in the region of the Americas, including the Caribbean. PAHU says this epidemiological update provides recommendations for maintaining surveillance for these viruses and strengthening health systems response, particularly given the current outbreaks of other communicable diseases. In 2023, the health body said Elevated levels of acute respiratory diseases were recorded in the region, driven by the circulation of SARS-CoV-2, influenza, and respiratory central virus. Currently, the Northern Hemisphere is experiencing epidemics of all three viruses expected in the winter, while some countries in the Southern Hemisphere are experiencing incidences higher than predicted for the season due to the circulation of the SARS-CoV-2, Pahu said. It recommended that member states maintain surveillance of respiratory viruses to detect any changes in circulation or severity of disease. Be prepared to respond to a possible increase in cases and hospitalizations and continue efforts to increase vaccination against influenza and COVID-19, particularly in vulnerable and high-risk populations. PAHU also urged regional countries to keep healthcare systems prepared and alert at all levels to respond to a possible increase in outpatient cases and hospitalizations, especially coinciding with the epidemic period for other communicable diseases with high demand for care. In a life-saving surgery on a toddler shot by a family member, Dale Jarvis brings you the latest updates on the success operation and the heartbreaking event that led to this tragic incident. Here's more. A five-year-old child underwent surgery at the Linden Hospital complex yesterday afternoon to remove a warhead which was lodged in the throat. The surgery was successful and the child remains at the hospital in stable condition. The warhead was sent to be analyzed by the Guyana Police Force Ballistic Section. The girl was reportedly shot by her uncle while laying in bed after a bullet protruded a wall between the two apartments. Reports are that around 1.15 p.m. on Thursday, medical personnel from the Linden Hospital Complex reported that the child was in the medical institution with a warhead lodged in her throat. The child's mother, Terry Ann Caesar, told the police that around 10 p.m. on Wednesday, she put the child to bed and while she was trying to put her eight-month-old baby to sleep, she heard the child screaming. Upon inquiry, the child said that she had hit her throat. Terrian applied petroleum jelly to the child's throat and put her back to sleep. The woman said that around 8 a.m. Thursday, she saw her five-year-old daughter crying, so she examined her throat and saw that it was swollen. She took the child to the McKenzie Hospital where she learned that there was a bullet lodged in her neck. There was also a small entry wound on the neck also. At about 5.15 p.m. yesterday, the authorities arrested the suspect at the McKenzie Bridge, Shamar Caesar. 
a 24-year-old taxi driver of Half Mile, Wismer Linden. Detectives conducted a video and audio interview with the suspect at McKenzie Police Station. The suspect said a friend gave him the gun, and while trying to remove the magazine, the gun went off. He further claimed that he went to the Four Corners and returned it to his friend. Police are currently making efforts to contact the friend. Investigations continue. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jervis. Thanks, Dale. Police are investigating an alleged burglary committed on the dwelling house of Dion Thompson, a 55-year-old chef of Samata Point Grove Housing Scheme, which occurred between 9 p.m. last evening and 4.30 a.m. this morning. One of the two suspects, Patrick McCray, a 22-year-old from Caneville, East Bank de Marara, was captured by police and the stolen articles were recovered. The other suspect, Antoine Sanson, a 19-year-old from Caneville, East Bank de Marara, is still on the run. Both suspects were previously charged and convicted of larceny and they were recently released from prison. Inquiries disclosed that around 9 p.m., the victim locked and secured her home and retired to bed. However, around 4.30 this morning, she was aroused by a sound coming from inside the upper flat of her home. Upon checking, she saw the two suspects without face masks. The two suspects escaped through an open window. The victim observed that her music set, remote control system, and Samsung phone were missing. She notified the police, who noticed the two suspects with the music system escaping on foot. One of the ranks approached the two suspects, and one of the suspects discharged several rounds towards the police. The ranks returned fire, which resulted in McCray being shot and caught. The other suspect, Samson, made good his escape. The suspect was admitted as a patient nursing a gunshot wound to his shoulder at the Georgetown Public Hospital, where he remains a patient. The police are currently looking for the other suspect as investigations continues. Stick around when we return. Demerara Harbor Bridge Management wants against overtaking Dream Crossing and PPP General Secretary assures no new taxes in 2024 budget. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to kick off the new year with a bang? Digicel has an offer that'll make your January extra special. Imagine winning up to a million dollars in free groceries in Digicel's six million dollars groceries extravaganza. Simply top up with a thousand dollars or more, and you can be one of six lucky winners to enjoy the ultimate shopping spree worth six million dollars. What are you waiting for? Start topping up today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for borrow for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. When you need money and you got to get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture offered at amazing prices will leave you wanting more from vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets. 
outdoor benches and tables. We have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Cliverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. GCOM is currently conducting a claims and objections exercise to produce an official list of electors OLE. If you will be 18 years or over by December 31, 2023, and you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, you are eligible for inclusion in the OLE. GCOM has posted the preliminary list of electors PLE for all registration divisions at popular locations across Guyana for you to check if you are listed and, if so, whether your particulars are accurate. You can make a claim for registration if you are not listed, change correction to your particulars if they are incorrect or object to the inclusion of anyone who you believe should not be on the list. If you are desirous of making a claim or objection, you must visit the GCOM registration office responsible for your area of residence to do so. The claims aspect of this exercise will end on Monday the 15th of January 2024. The objections aspect of this exercise will end on Monday the 22nd of January 2024. All GCOM registration offices will be open Mondays to Fridays from 8 hours to 18 hours, Saturdays and Sundays from 10 hours to 14 hours. For further information, contact GCOM at 225-027829 or visit our website at www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. The People's Progressive Party General Secretary, Dr. Barry Jagdeel, has assured that the 2024 budget, set to be presented on Monday, will not introduce new taxes. Dr. Jagdeel emphasized the government's commitment to economic and social infrastructure, job creation, and industry support. He pledged significant investments in community roads, health facilities, education, and recreational facilities, focusing on assisting vulnerable groups like children, women, and older people. The 2023 budget, the largest budget to date, totaling $781.9 billion, also saw no new taxes and allocated $136.1 billion to enhance the road and bridge network. Major projects advanced in 2023, including the new Demerara River Bridge and the Liden Mabura Hill Road. The budget addressed global inflation by increasing income tax thresholds and providing additional support for various sectors. Dr. Jack Leo affirmed continued support for children, pensioners, and healthcare expansion in the upcoming budget, reflecting the theme of the 2023 budget, improving lives today, building prosperity for tomorrow. In other news, the management of the Demerara Harbor Bridge Corporation has observed an increase in vehicles overtaking during the standard two-way traffic crossing on the Demerara Harbor Bridge. Management is reminding drivers that this violates the rule number four of the bridge's rules for vehicular traffic. No unauthorized stopping, parking, or overtaking of vehicle shall be allowed on the bridge. This action has resulted in an increase in both minor and major incidents on the bridge. As such, drivers and riders are urged to stop this practice immediately and to observe the speed limit and other rules and regulations. Failure to comply may result in a ban from transiting the bridge. Other rules to note are the Demerara Harbor Bridge's speed limit of 32 kilometers or 20 miles per hour, as well as the maximum weight limit allowed on the bridge, 18 tons per average crossing between 4 a.m. and 10.30 p.m. and 24 tons per particular crossing between 10.30 p.m. and 3.30 a.m. Don't go away after the break. Trump fraud trial, Trump calls civil charges politically motivated, and China-Taiwan tension, Taipei accuses Beijing of interference in election. Forget things. Oh, 
problem, Granny? I want money for borrow for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoon's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Caliverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. money and you gotta get it fast creative jewelry and pawn shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location you'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too yes for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem that creative jewelry and pawn shop for the six boil place that's between the ministry of housing on brick dam and white castle fish shop be your first and only choice Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to kick off the new year with a bang? Digicel has an offer that'll make your January extra special. Imagine winning up to a million dollars in free groceries in Digicel's six million dollars groceries extravaganza. Simply top up with a thousand dollars or more, and you can be one of six lucky winners to enjoy the ultimate shopping spree worth six million dollars. What are you waiting for? Start topping up today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. GCOM is currently conducting a claims and objections exercise to produce an official list of electors OLE. If you will be 18 years or over by December 31st, 2023, and you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, or naturalization, or a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more, you are eligible for inclusion in the OLE. GCOM has posted the preliminary list of electors, PLE, in all of the registration divisions across Guyana for you to check if you are listed and if so, whether your particulars are accurate. If you have changed your address since you were registered, you are required to visit the GCOM registration office responsible for your new area of residence to apply for a transfer. Monday, 15 January 2024 is the last day in which you can apply for a transfer. For further information, contact GCOM at 225-0278-29 or visit our website at www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Argentina's annual inflation has surged past the 200 mark to 211%. The country has now outpaced Venezuela, where years of hyperinflation and economic woes have provoked a mass exodus. But Argentina's new far-right president, Javier Malay, says things will get better, but not before they get worse. Al Jazeera's Latin American editor, Lucia Newman, reports. In the blink of an eye, petrol prices in Argentina have doubled, while the local currency, the peso, is now worth half. Menus in most restaurants are no longer exhibiting prices. They're going up too fast to print. Every day it's worse. This is turning into Venezuela. The latest official inflation figure is more than 25% for the month of December almost double what it was in November. 
The owner of this business loves guanacos, which is similar to a llama. And so he's decided to plaster the outside of his shop with 20 peso bills, which happen to feature guanacos. And that's because it's a lot cheaper than buying wallpaper. About 15 years ago, you could buy lunch and get changed with one of these bills. Now it's about to go out of circulation because it's practically worthless. Yet one thing remains stable, the way to buy and sell real estate. Prices are all in U.S. dollars, as they have been for decades. Broker Cecilia Bassi explains that bank loans are practically unheard of because interest rates are astronomical. You have to pay for all transactions up front, in cash and in U.S. dollars. It's a widespread practice. No one would dream of buying or selling property in local currency. With rare exceptions, Argentines have bought, sold and saved in U.S. dollars for nearly half a century to offset repeated devaluations and inflation. A vicious circle that the new government vows to break with a brutal fiscal adjustment. This year, the government will not print any money to cover the fiscal deficit. In the next three months, there will be hyperinflation as subsidies disappear, followed by a steep recession. The government's objective is to achieve zero inflation by December. Right now, that's hard to imagine. Next week, public transport in Buenos Aires will go up 45 percent, while salaries remain stagnant. Those who voted for President Javier Milei say they knew his cure for their economic woes would be extreme. What many aren't sure of now is whether they can withstand the medicine. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Buenos Aires. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump says a lawsuit accusing him of fraud, itself a fraud. He made the comments during the closing arguments of the trial. A judge has already determined that Trump fraudulently inflated his assets to secure loans. The trial will now determine the penalties. Al Jazeera's Kirsten Salomi has more. Former President Donald Trump defending himself in a civil fraud lawsuit brought against him by New York State's Attorney General. We've proven this case so conclusively. Uh, we've asked for directed verdict many times. Uh, they don't have any facts. They don't have any evidence against us. Millions and millions of pages, years of litigation, and all politically motivated. Letitia James, a Democrat, and Judge Arthur Engerin have been targets of the former president's wrath throughout the 44-day trial. During closing arguments, Trump spoke in the courtroom, ignoring the judge's warning to stick to the evidence presented in the case. The state accused Trump and his two adult sons of overinflating the value of his assets in seeking loans and insurance. The state says that fraud was central to the operations of the Trump Organization. This case is about the facts and the law. And Mr. Donald Trump violated the law. We have produced evidence about the scope, the scale, the depth, the breadth of the illegality, the fraud that impersonally enriched Donald Trump and his family. At stake, his ability to operate a business in New York. The judge has already found him guilty of fraud, but must decide on six other related claims and how much he owes in damages. The state has asked for $370 million. Judge Arthur Engeron is expected to make his decision in the coming weeks. Meantime, police in his hometown are investigating threats that were made against him on the morning of closing arguments. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New York. Finally, the Taiwanese government has accused China of interfering in upcoming elections by engaging in a disinformation campaign to sway voters. Beijing believes the island is a rural Chinese territory and has been putting pressure on its people to accept reunification. Al Jazeera's Katrina Yu reports. Chinese leaders have branded Taiwan's upcoming elections a choice between war and peace. They've ramped up military pressure, sending hundreds of jets close to the island's territory, economic pressure by ending tariff cuts on chemical imports, and diplomatic pressure, whistling away at Taiwan's shrinking list of official allies. Taiwanese leaders have also accused China of using covert tactics. They include an online disinformation campaign to sway votes in favor of pro-Beijing candidates, 
and sow distrust in the governing Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP. Analysts say this includes spreading content about food shortages and political and sex scandals. They amplify those conflict issues, like some uh, scandals from DPP and also some like sh egg shortage and also some uh, uh, vaccine uh, problems or corruption issue. Beijing believes the self-governed island is a part of China and reunification is inevitable, something the DPP and outgoing leader Tsai Ing-wen refused to accept. Cross-strait tensions have soared since her election in 2016, and Beijing says it will escalate if the DPP's new candidate, Lai Qingte, succeeds her. Why does the DPP authority stubbornly go their own way, in not just to prepare for war, but also to coerce the youth in Taiwan into a battlefield and serve as cannon folder for Taiwan independence. Beijing prefers opposition party the Kuomintang, or KMT, which wants closer ties with China. It's the only party in official contact with the Chinese government. Chinese officials have denied interfering in the elections. People here, just across the strait from Taiwan, will be watching the results closely. The Chinese government has introduced measures to encourage what it calls integration between the two sides, including making it easier for Taiwanese people to travel, study, work and do trade on the mainland. Beijing's message? China is not a bully, but a friend of Taiwan. Something voters going to the polls best remember. Katrina Yu, Xiamen City, Fujian Province, China. This brings us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the three-day weather forecast. And that's it to be to headline news for this Friday evening. As we take early, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be off for the weekend, but you can tune in on Monday at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a wonderful weekend.